You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is crossover time here because it is Thursday. It is week three of the National Football League. I am Tony Wiggins. He is Daniel Wade. I'm from Locked On Jaguars. He's from Locked On Chargers. We're going to give you all of this information that you need for this game in just a second. Today's episode, of course, is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you win up to 10 times your money. On your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepick.com. Promo code is locked on. No promo code needed for my man, Daniel Wade. What is going <laughs> on, brother? What is up? This is, uh, I mean, I, I'm not trying to throw shade at all, but I've been looking forward to this crossover. Tony, my boy Wig is easily my, my favorite host to follow on Twitter. My favorite host to see in the NFL DMs. I wish you guys could see that. He is the man. Super happy to be here, bro. Man, I'm flattered. I really, really appreciate that. This is one I was looking forward to also. Now, Drogi couldn't couldn't join us, but that's fine. That's my boy, too. I, we got to shout out him because you guys are a two-team deal, a two-man deal over there with the L.A. Chargers. By the way, I've been calling y'all San Diego all week. I hadn't, <laughs> done, I hadn't done that for years, and now all of a sudden, I'm right back to it. We're going to get to the biggest stories of the game. I'm going to start with you. You let me know from your perspective. I would suspect that it might have something to do with some rib cartilage, but you tell me what the biggest story is for your Chargers. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it will Keenan Allen play. No, I mean, it, it's Justin Herbert. It's been Justin Herbert. It's been hard to find things to talk about outside of Justin Herbert so far this week doing a show every day because that is the number one thing i mean justin herbert you step into a game with him that is usually your biggest advantage right last week with patrick mahomes maybe that gets a little bit muddy there but if you have justin herbert means everything and just because you know cooper rush goes and beats the Bengals doesn't mean it's a likely thing for you to go in there and win with your backup quarterback no matter how good your roster is so we did see here some good news on wednesday coming out from NFL Network saying that Justin Herbert was in the facility. He has been throwing. He looked like his normal self today. And Wednesday's practice, he didn't end up doing much, but he was out there. He stretched, he turned, he did everything but throw the football. But, I mean, for me, Wig, I think he's going to play. I, I mean, there's nothing out there. I have no insider sourcing or anything, but this is the National Football League. If they were to really, truly let it heal for the next, you know, month or something, maybe that makes it to a point where, hey, he's fully better. You're not going to re-injure anything. You can't make it worse. They don't have a month. This is a team where the window is now. You have one of the most important quarterbacks in the entire NFL. So even though he's going to be questionable, Brandon Staley is saying he's day-to-day. -day. It's hard to go anywhere other than that with the biggest part of the story because that could have a huge you know, impact on whether the Chargers win or lose. I'll stay right there with you and talk about uh, our quarterback here, Trevor Lawrence. A week removed from people questioning whether or not he was the generational quarterback that everyone thought. And then he goes out and has – a Phil Sims like I don't know, I'm <laughs> aging myself here, but a very, very workmanlike, professional, competent, patient game. And you know you can do that against Gus Bradley defenses. Both of us know that too well. He's too gonna rough. give you everything underneath. And he took everything that they gave him, was super, super efficient, and it really, really answered a lot of questions. So beyond him, uh, I, I really gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna piggyback on that a little bit and say the biggest story is. Are they grown? Are they the Cubs who still just got big paws and want to uh, go out and play as hard and are the fans going to be able to settle for what I call moral victories because it's not the same old Jaguars. They're tough out. They're hard to beat and they play hard. None of that stuff means anything. I said yeah. on my podcast yesterday that if I'm Doug Peterson, I show videos of Clyde Edwards Hilaire running over Derwin James. <laughs> and I and, and I say, I show it every 10 minutes on the plane. Like, <laughs> they put their pants on just like you. I know they have a lot of really, really good players, super, super talented players. But what do you want to be? You want to be the team that uh, has the expectation of just improving and getting better? Or do you want to say, hey, why not us? Why not right now? Let's show we're grown. We're not just some puppies. We're big paws. We're big dogs. 
things can change very, very quickly in the National Football League. You get the right coach, the right quarterback, and you get enough people that have short memories, that don't yeah. understand that this franchise has only been to the playoffs four or five times in 27 years, that don't know that and don't care that they have more top 10 draft picks in, in a row than just about anybody in a decade, you know? So right. you want to see if they're going to grow up and be able to get rid of this thing that you can't fly across the country and win a game on another coast. hundred percent. I, I mean, yeah. And, and for Trevor Lawrence winning a road game, right. For the first time, I believe in his NFL career. So I think that is going to be a huge thing. And I think both teams are at the same spot. Maybe the chargers just a little bit further along, which is okay. With expectations, right. Which the Jaguars have now put on themselves being first in the AFC South comes the loss of moral victories. The Chargers can't feel good about a Thursday night football game against Patrick Mahomes, right, where they closely lose. That doesn't cut it anymore when you have these expectations. When you have the roster the Chargers have, there's no such thing as moral victories. And for the Chargers, I mean, I think it's more of a sense of, okay, taking care of business because I think when you look into this game, you're like, this is the soft spot of the Chargers schedule, right? You get the Jaguars, you get the Texans, you get the Cleveland Browns, right? This was the spot they were supposed to get fat on. And then maybe, you know, teams like the Titans and the Colts and these strong power running games of the AFC South would be harder to really deal with later on in the season. Maybe you're a little bit more cohesive at that point. It doesn't look that way anymore, right? There's no gimmies in the AFC South this year. I mean, that's my takeaway from two weeks in the NFL, which has been a crazy two weeks. But I think for the... The Jack specifically, it's it's blood in the water, Tony. I mean, I think it's, hey, do you, are you seeing this opportunity right now? You have two very flawed teams that led this division and made the playoffs last year in the AFC South. Can you be the team that takes advantage of all these other broken pieces who are still trying to figure it out? I'm just sitting here wondering, too, because every single year, uh, you know, I follow it really closely. We always look at their roster and say the Chargers are one of the most talented teams, man for man, in the National Football League. Somebody the other night said this, the Chargers are going to charge her. So mm -hmm. when you hear stuff like that, yeah. explain what does that mean to the fans, of, of, to you who cover the team, and what does it mean to the fans? Hearing people say the Chargers are going to charge her. I mean, it's it's my whole life, right? I mean, that that's always been the story. San Diego, Los Angeles, wherever, it hasn't mattered. It's followed them, and that has been the hardest thing to buck for any new head coach, right? And anyone trying to really win the hearts of these fans is showing them that it's going to be different. Because you're talking about teams that blow, you know, two, three score leads in the fourth quarter. Teams that, you know, charging is this. Charging is, hey, we have a lead and you can never feel good about it. There's never any comfort. There's never any confidence. You feel, how are they going to mess this up? That's something mm -hmm. that's deep-seated in the Chargers fan base. And, I, to you know, I respect Brandon Steely for coming on saying, hey, I don't like that. Like, right, he, like, fully addressed it. It was a thing that you didn't talk about if you were a Chargers coach, right? It was just, like, a, a myth or something. Ah, we don't pay attention to that stuff. Brandon Staley admitted, hey, they're hearing about that stuff. They know what Chargering is. And one of the things he said this year is, hey, we're trying to get away from doing that. But then, you know, you have five straight scoreless possessions in the last game where you give up a pick six, and it's like, okay, well, that kind of looks like Chargering, right? So it takes a lot more. The Chargers are always – the on-paper team. That's what they have been, right? They're the on-paper all-stars, right? Do it in the game. Do it in important games. Do it in important moments in those important games. And have all these stars that you've brought in get into one collective unit that is actually worth something and a chance that has a team to make a deep playoff run. Two weeks in, it's hard to say that, right? I mean, you know they're good. I think the defense has kind of acquitted itself as being like, okay, this wasn't just a bunch of hapless spending, right? And I think the Jaguars with Christian Kirk it's like oh hey maybe there's a reason they gave this dude all this money right so like, I think both teams have acquitted themselves in their own way but I can tell you one thing I've been trying to equip myself by going back in the gym and it gets a little bit harder the older I get I don't want to go as much anymore I mean I've been playing pickleball but what I've been getting into lately new genics are you feeling older it's been a little harder to get in shape it's not your fault as men age our body naturally loses free testosterone the man hormone and it happens to every man it can make it more difficult to stay in shape and be energetic and active Want more energy at the counter with less negative side effects of aging? Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster with Testafin will help you turn back the clock, re-energize your workouts, get better results at the gym, and help you look and feel like the man you really want to be. Nugenics Total T contains man-boosting key ingredients like Testafin, has been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men. And while every product professes quality, many other products use generic ingredients that are far often less than the clinical grade. With Nugenics Total T, you get the same clinical potency levels used in the trials. But Nugenics' new formulation is backed by 10 years of science in the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. 
All you guys have to do right now to get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text NFL to 231-231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you get back in shape fast, absolutely free. Just text to NFL to 231-231. Text NFL to 231-231. Message and data made to reply. Terms and apply or terms apply available at nugenics.com slash terms. All right, we're gonna give you a boost here in the second <laughs> segment because we're gonna talk about some key matchups. So I'll go first here on a crossover where we thank you for making us your first listen here on a prizepicks.com crossover between the Chargers and the Jags. I talked about this yesterday, so I'll go ahead and regurgitate it that I think the key matchup at least for Jacksonville, because here's my theory. They need to, last week was a blueprint. Control the clock, win early, win on first down, and uh, keep your defense rested, get some points early in the game so that your defense can get to their sub packages, okay? So in order to do that, they have to protect Trevor Lawrence. I think the pass rush with Bosa as well as Khalil Mack is a scary prospect. So they have to, it's all going to be on the tackles. I think it's going to be on Cam Robinson and more importantly, Jawan Taylor, the right tackle who has really, really played lights out. And if the season ended right now, I know it's only two games. I'd <laughs> nominate him for all pro. So whoever's going to line up on that side, whether it's Mac or Bosa, I would leave Jawan Taylor one-on-one -on -one with him. And then I would use the tight end to chip the other guy on the other side. So Trevor Lawrence at least gets a chance, even if he's just completing things underneath, at least gets a chance to have short down and distance situations so that they have more of an opportunity to prolong drives. And if they do that and can score some points, then when they're on defense, I believe they can win on first down and then start to pressure Justin Herbert up the middle with their pass rush. And let's just, I'm, I'm not saying go commit a penalty, but what I am saying is this, we're going to test those ribs out. And I'm not talking about barbecue, right? We're going to see what those ribs working with, if, if, if that meat going to fall off that bone or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to put pressure on them without being dirty. But you got to learn how to play with the league if, lead if you're Jacksonville, because I think that's where they're at the ab absolute best. And it's what happened last week against the Colts. They were able to get to those sub packages and the pass rush bothered Matt Ryan. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember ever seeing a game where Matt Ryan looked as bad as what he was last week. And I mean, just to, you know, hold Jonathan Taylor to five yards on five carries in the first half. And that one was ridiculous. Nobody does that even when they know it's coming. Right. But, hey, I mean, for all the Charger fans out there, I know, yeah, you don't want to hear about Justin Herbert's ribs getting caved in. But this is football, right? That If you think that there's any team that's not putting that up on the projector and showing you exactly where to hit, it's not Bounty Gate, it's football, right? That's what you do. You do try to attack your opponent's weaknesses. And right now, Justin Herbert's rib cage is one of those weaknesses. But when you are talking about the biggest matchup in this game, I'm kind of going the same way as you. I think it's Trevor Lawrence versus Brandon Staley because one thing that Brandon Staley has done exceptionally well this year, make quarterbacks uncomfortable. You look at Derek Carr, three interceptions in week one. You look at Patrick Mahomes' you know, box score, he threw two touchdowns after he had two interceptions that were called back or dropped. He didn't have a Patrick Mahomes-like game. What, 235 yards, right? Pretty average, pretty mediocre. Brandon Staley has made quarterbacks uncomfortable this year. And when I go back and watch that game from last week, Tony, uncomfortable is the furthest word I would put away from Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence had a field day back there. He three pressures allowed all day. If you let him sit back there, he's going to pick you apart. So for me, it's about making him uncomfortable. It's how will Brandon Staley make him uncomfortable? And I think a lot of that is, Hey, you can't give him just those first easy reads. Let him get rid of the ball quick. You have to make him hold on to it that extra second, right? You have to make him move around a little bit. I think his pocket awareness seems like it's much better than when I was watching him last year. That definitely for Trevor Lawrence seems like a big part of it. But if you can make him uncomfortable, we have seen some uncomfortable moments from him, right? I think there was two interceptions he probably should have thrown last week that you could reasonably say, hey, a DB should have came down with that. I think it's the Chargers making him uncomfortable. And if you do get those mistakes, the couple mistakes he seems to make every game, take advantage of it because that could be the difference. It could be the difference. There's something else I want to mention, too. There's a dynamic here with the receivers in the corners that is, is you know, Really remarkable. The Jaguars' corners are, by NFL standards, lengthy. Both yeah. guys are both guys are six one. Now, the uh, Williams, who the, you know, the Williams kid that they just signed from the Rams, 
who's in the slot. Darius he's Williams, not, yeah. Yeah, Darius is not big. Darius five ten, but he yeah. he's one of those five ten dudes that could probably dunk a basketball backwards. So oh, like, totally. He's like so so Nate athletic, Robinson. right? Yeah, yeah, that dude, right? But with Shaquille Griffin and Tyson uh, Campbell, they're big. The propensity they have is to, especially Shaquille, is to get beat deep. And we've seen it early in the year. We saw it uh, in week one against Washington. The Chargers receivers are big. Now, when you flip it around, and they're not necessarily going to beat you with deep stuff. They're going to beat you by Mike Williams is going to go up with a catch radius sure. that's going to destroy you, right? Yeah. The other thing is when you flip it around, the Jaguars receivers are not big and neither are the corners for the Chargers. So yeah. it's going to be big man versus big man. And then on the other side, it's going to be little man versus little man. <laughs> so we're going to have to see who gets the better of that situation also. Yeah. And I mean, I talked about Justin Herbert. Like, I think the biggest thing, you know, has been a lot of frustration with the Chargers offense. It's like, hey, you've been missing Keenan Allen for six and a half quarters. And that dude might come back this week. Like, that is huge. He is easily their best receiver. I know Mike Will got the contract. Keenan Allen's been doing it. He's a guy that has proven production. In the first quarter and a half of this season, he had four catches, 64 yards, and looked like he was going to torch every single, you know, franchise record that he's already set with the Chargers. And I just think that is going to be a huge part of it. For me, in Specifically talking about the Chargers defense, there's one place where I think Jacksonville can test them, and that is just force feeding, you know, Christian Kirk the ball and then just letting him run because that's one thing the Chargers haven't always been good at. Christian Kirk has the seventh most yards after the catch so far in 2022, and that's something that scares me a little bit is the Chargers tackling because if you let that dude loose, if you're just going to, you know, not be able to stop them on those quick seven yard passes and that turns into 15, 20 yards, it's going to be a problem. And I think for the Chargers, the other offensive matchup i'm thinking about austin eckler versus this jaguars d that just did that against jonathan taylor i mean if you look at the raw numbers right they've just been okay as efficiency wise as far as stopping the run but nobody's put up a big number on them by any means nobody's been able to dictate to the jaguars you know we're gonna run all over you kind of a thing the Chargers have been a really bad rushing team so far this season they've averaged 2.7 yards per carry that i, I want to see if they can get going especially mm -hmm. if it isn't justin herbert i mean Good Lord, no, you have to have a running game if you're going to be throwing a backup quarterback in there for sure. But at the same time, I do think the one place I would want to test Jacksonville is with Austin Eckler running through those linebackers in that secondary, right? Because I do think it's not something that's a huge weakness for the Jaguars, but I do think if the running game can't get going, one of the things they're going to do to supplant that, get the ball in Austin Eckler's hands and let him run around, right? He's such a small dude that packs a punch that he's really, really tough to get when he's in the open field. And I think that is some way that the Chargers will, hey, we, not, we might not be able to get five yards of carry on first down. Can we get five to seven yards just feeding it to Austin Eckler and letting him, you know, force a missed tackle or do whatever he can do? Because running backs do have about 140 yards against the Jacksonville Jaguars in the air through two weeks. So I do think that is a matchup that I'm going to be looking at for sure. I'm going to be looking at that matchup too. And I'm going to be looking at a bunch of matchups around the NFL and where I'm going to get my information to find out if I'm on the right track. Is going to be at Bet Online because Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's week three action. Now, you're going to find out if Justin Herbert is going to be able to play and whether or not they're going to use Austin Eckler and what the analytics are. It says that who can catch the ball out of the backfield if Austin Eckler isn't the guy that's going to do it. You find all of that out at Bet Online because it's your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. So you head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Don't get caught sleeping, man, because Bet Online is where the game is starts man i need to step up my ad ring game i should have been watching locked on jags to you know check out tony and what he's doing in there i mean i want to go to bed online that's for sure but tony i mean we talked about kind of you know the importance of this game for the jags i mean sole possession of the afc south is really nice you want to keep that right two and one feels pretty good especially with how they've been the last couple of years and i mean i think what you've seen with the jaguars this year is hey Coaching matters, right? And the Chargers are still trying to figure out if they have a good coach in Brandon Staley as well. And going 2-1-1 and one for both these teams, I think, is a good step in the right direction. For Brandon Staley, hey, it's taking care of business. For Doug Peterson, it's, hey, we're here. We're for real. We're trying to take it this year. This is a not a rebuild. This is, hey, let's go get it done right now. But easier said than done. And the Jaguars are traveling to Los Angeles. That is a long trip. Trevor Lawrence hasn't won a road game. Do you think 
this is the week he gets it done. Yes. And Ooh. I'm not being a homer here. I'm used, <laughs> I, I cover this team not as a fan, a fan of Jacksonville, but I try to be as either objective or subjective, whichever one is the right objective that we're going to inject <laughs> into what we're saying right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was almost going to say 31-27 Chargers and that the Jags would have a a moment that they had like in the opening week against Washington where they thought we let it get away sure. or they had some sort of mental lapse. But some a little man sat on my shoulder and said, they're going to get it done. When you ask me that question, are they going to finally grow up and you talk about coaching? One decided advantage I believe that they have, you mentioned Trevor Lawrence against Brandon Staley. I'm looking at Doug Peterson versus Brandon Staley. And if Doug Peterson can use Nick Foles against the GOAT and put up a 40-burger in the Super Bowl, (laughs) Doug Peterson can put 31 on Brendan Staley. I got the Jags winning 31-30 and going to Mm -hmm. 2-1. 31-30 hurts me because I feel like that's like a, a Chargers PAT that's being missed somewhere in the middle of that. But I think the other matchup, too, another thing that can decide this outside of coaching Tony is special teams. Jamal Agnew terrifies me. That dude is the truth. I do not want to see that dude catching it with a bunch of space to run around because it seems like when good teams, right, or even favorite teams lose to the underdog, always something a little weird for the most part, right? And I think for the Chargers, that's what I'd be looking at because – They did give up two return touchdowns in the same game on back-to-back returns, basically kickoff return and a punt return to the Cowboys in the preseason. Not the same team, but special teams is an issue until they prove it's not. And we haven't seen any major disasters by the Chargers special teams unit. That is something that could wildly swing this game because I do think it's going to be closer than a lot of Chargers fans feel, right? And I'm doing this assuming that Justin Herbert's going to play, right? Because I don't know if I'd be picking the Chargers if Justin Herbert wasn't playing. I'd probably be picking the Jaguars. I'm going to assume that Justin Herbert will play. I'm going to assume he's, you know, within 90%, 80 to 90%, well enough, looking close enough to the Justin Herbert that Chargers fans have seen the last two years. I'm going to say Brandon Staley does make life miserable for Trevor Lawrence a little bit. I do think that the Jags haven't faced anything like Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa yet, and I do think that's going to affect them to a lower score than you're saying. I'm going to say Chargers 28, Jaguars 20. Solid, solid, solid. I will tell you this, though, as we put a little wrap and put a little bow on this, one of the things that I look back at and one of the areas with Justin Herbert, because whether he plays or not, he's going to play, he's going to feel whatever's going on. Sure. With him. And in football, you're bound to get hit. Even You might even run to your own guy and get hit. And Tony, did you see that throw he made though after he hurt the ribs? I, I did, I did, I did. I, I saw that's that. One of the best throws I've ever seen. Yeah, that was, <laughs> and, the, and the one in week one when he threw it over to the right on the right. That was a good one. Here's what I think. I look back, and there was a two week stretch last year, and I remember this vague, uh, vividly because I think I may have had a little money bet on on your team. A little bet online action when they went to Baltimore, oh, yeah. and he could he couldn't hit the side of a barn with a bowling ball. And then the very next week, he couldn't hit the side of a barn again against the Patriots. It was two straight games where it was just like, what is he doing? Yeah. Those teams are built and were built the way the Jaguars are constructed right now with those big guys in that front seven. So because of that, I'll go back to the biggest story. The biggest story is can we affect um, can we affect him and can we have some sort of effect? Here you go. I'll give you three of those beautiful throws. Three of those, he makes three of those throws that blows my mind, and y'all still lose because the other night when he made that throw, they got beat. So the thing is, is he can do that. It's not mutually exclusive. You can make those beautiful throws, and we can ooh and ah all we sure. want, and you cannot win. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna say mainly because he's a little bit unhealthy, and I think the Chargers, probably being like everybody else, think that they can win this easily. And I think Jacksonville is gonna have a a little bit of surprise for him. Yeah, and I and I would push hard against anybody thinking the Chargers are going to easily win this game because we talked about charging, right? We talked about that, Wig. Like, there is no easy win for the Chargers. It doesn't exist. Like, there's no fourth quarter you're going to be sitting there chilling, you know, thinking I'm going to have the, the fifth or sixth beer right now because nothing bad can happen. No. You're just going to end up throwing your TV remote through your TV screen. Like, I mean, that's just – there's nothing safe with the Chargers ever. When you have a team like this, and I think the other thing you're saying too here is 
the Jags are that team, right? They're not a pushover team. You're not saying, hey, they're Super Bowl contenders, but what you are saying is, hey, you can't afford to miss your quarterback against this team anymore. Maybe there's other years you could get away with it. This isn't the team you can do that. And Justin Herbert, every once in a while, does have one of those you know, games where you're scratching your head. The other 14 games of the season, he looks like the MVP, but you never know. And I do think there is somewhat a formula, but I would go as far as to say this. If you're telling me right now Justin Herbert's playing they're all pro center who still hasn't allowed a sack since he started with the Chargers. Corey Lindsley is playing, and they're Pro Bowl five times in a row receiver. Keenan Allen's playing. I'll guarantee a victory right now. I don't know those things. I don't know if Keenan Allen's going to play, but what I will tell you is this offense looks different with the comfortability that Justin Herbert has with Keenan Allen and the fact that this year there was a specific plan to target him a little bit deeper down the field. We started to see it just to have it taken away from us so quickly. So I do think that could happen. I could see it roll either way. I mean, I'm going 28-20 charges. I'm assuming Justin Herbert's playing, but there's so many things in the air. There's three or four factors that are in the air, Tony, that make me feel totally differently between now and Sunday. I don't think folks know how long, how much we enjoy talking to each other, man. <laughs> you know, you know, it feels like Ray and Claude in life. It sure is good to talk to you again. You know what I'm saying? One of those things. But um Two other people that do a lot of talking to Brian Peacock and Matt Williamson on the Peacock and Williamson <laughs> yeah, NFL show. Make sure you check that out. Make that your second listener. Uh, Matt Williams is a former NFL scout and Brian Peacock is just Brian Peacock, man. And he gives it to you like nobody else. So make sure you like and subscribe and find that wherever you get your podcast on all platforms. It is also free. And also make sure you continue to check out Locked on Chargers and Locked on Jaguars and make us your first listen on a daily basis. This is the prizepicks.com crossover Thursday. I just want everybody to come out of the game healthy, man. Good luck to you. And uh, I'll be hitting you up, Dan. And um, thanks for joining us here on Locked on Jaguars. And we appreciate you. Oh, absolutely, Tony. I, I mean, I just maybe the Chargers and Jaguars will get in the same division so we can do this two times a year because I think that's the only way it's going to happen. But yeah, I mean, Locked on Jags, Locked on Jaguars, best show out there. That's not the Locked on Chargers podcast. Uh, and Brian Peacock. The best voice on the network. That's not named Tony Wiggins. But, hey, oh, excited man. for this matchup, man. I love doing this. And I mean, hey, hopefully we get a good game to watch and the Chargers come out on top. No doubt. Y'all take care. Take care of each other like we always say here. And we'll see you next time.